Yeah, let's look at Ezekiel 47. We'll just kind of start there and see where it goes, okay? Um, where's my internet here? Doom, doom. There we go. Ezekiel 47. And you probably know what I'm going to hit here. <clears throat> Ezekiel 47, let's see here, um, and we want to, uh, let's start around uh, verse 3. This is, this is about the river, the river, it, 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 it's about, you know, it's called Ezekiel's River, and, and it's a vision, but a lot of times we would equate this river as a metaphor for the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, so when you think of this river, think of the, the Holy Spirit. We can learn some things about the Holy Spirit by reading about this river, this vision that Ezekiel had way back when. And, and so we'll st you know, start in verse 3 here. Um, uh, you know, it says, and, and when the, the man, Ezekiel, basically there's this man, could be an angel, I, I'm probably an angel, uh, is, is leading Ezekiel uh, through this this river into this river and and when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand he measured 1,000 cubits so they're stepping out into the river you know a thousand a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters came up to my ankles everybody say ankles okay verse 4 and again okay this man that's that's you know leading Ezekiel again he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters and the water came up to my Knees. Everybody say knees. And again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. Everybody say waist. And again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river I could not cross. The water was too deep, water in which must, one must swim, a river that can't be crossed. And I was, I was you know, pondering this. And let's, let's look at a couple things here. Well, first of all, the river, the Holy Spirit, we see that Ezekiel had to have a guide. He had to have a guide. He had to have someone show him how to go deeper. Okay? He needed help. This is the prophet. You know, the prophet didn't even know how to, how to figure this out. He, he needed somebody to, 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 to work him through and work him into the deep places. And we, we can learn from that because, because in order to go deeper in the river of God, we need to be led in. You don't know how to swim those waters. You don't know how. And, and so, so I, I just rejoice, you know, whenever somebody has a first encounter with the Holy Spirit, you know, I, because I, we don't have comparative journeys here. It's like as long as we're on one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As long as we're on one. And so we could just leave comparison at the door. But, but the thing is, you know, there, you have to be led in because we simply don't know how to swim it. We don't know how to go there. And so we see that this is what's happening with Ezekiel. You know, he's having to go through the process of finding depth, the deep places in this river. He, he this prophet, is actually having to go through the process. This is, this is Ezekiel 47. You know, I mean, he's, he's seen all these visions and all these kind of things, and yet he's still having to be led into the deep places. Um, it, it, so so he... They're being, you know, Ezekiel's being led into deeper places, and that's the intention, that's the metaphor, that's the example, and he's being led deeper, and he's being led deeper, and he's led deeper, and then we see something here about this river, that it's a river you can't cross. In other words, you will never, ever get to the end of the encounter or the kinds of encounters that you could ever experience with the Spirit of God. There is never an end there is never an end to the experiences or the creativity or the kinds of experiences or the types of experiences. There is never an end to it. You can't cross this river. You can't cross this river. At the same time, you can't swim it unless somebody helps you. Unless there is the Holy Spirit leading you into those deep places, you can't even get there. 
You can't navigate it. You can't swim it. You can't do it unless he leads you there. Here's my question to you. Are you stuck in the been there, done that? What if there is a next? What if there is a next? I have found that, that the Holy Spirit encounters us, and there's a reason why he encounters us. It's not, it's not just to be, you know, I don't know. It's not just for, for nothing. It's not without purpose. The Lord doesn't do things without purpose. He doesn't do things without a cause, without a reason, without a, without a destination. Okay, and he wants to encounter us with depths that we have not experienced before. He wants to break open here with what's next. There's always a forerunner. There's always a forerunner in the experiences of God. Because, you know, it's this thing where he's constantly saying, don't put me in a box. I can do things you don't know I can do. All right. And he's constantly challenging those borders and those those barriers that we have inside of us. And we all do. We all do. This last year, I have worked through a fence at the miracles that God has done through my life. To, and they're, they're not even for me. They're for other people. And I'm like, are you serious? I don't get it. This is weird. I am weird girl now. <laughs> I didn't even ask for this. And yet he's, say, he's shouting. He's screaming a message. I can do anything. And I heard that so clearly. There's a next. There's a next. He's just looking for people who allow him to take you there. To take you there. Who will be the forerunner? Who will forerun the next wave of miracles? The next wave of glory? Because we are going from glory to glory. That's Bible. We know that. That means it gets brighter and deeper and more extravagant and more more encounter and more miraculous. It does all those things. We are in this tremendous power shift until Jesus returns. We're in this tremendous, I'm hearing noises. Jesus, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm hearing chariots and Siri. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so and so you know and, and so with this whole thing about we are going from glory to glory, understanding that I've got to position myself in relationship with the Holy Spirit because He's requiring relationship out of us. We have been taught too often, too many times to put the cart before the horse, seeking the power of God without without relationship and cultivating any level of friendship with the Spirit of God. That will only get you so far. And here's what I have learned about walking in the gift of miracles this year let me tell you what happens to you when you operate in the in the gift of working in miracles well first of all it's real power it's real power and it's like and 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 sometimes you know it comes on so strongly I don't know what to do with myself and I've also learned because, you know, if you, if you read the book Glory Cares, you'll see my whole journey just figuring out how to be in relationship with the Holy Spirit, dealing with my fears of the Spirit of God, dealing with, um, you know, the, the things inside of me that would grieve him because I had some things inside of me, some attitudes inside of me that would grieve him and cause him to lift off of my life. And then, uh, you know, working through that and seeing the miracles starting to emerge, and I just didn't expect that miracle to happen. I didn't think we'd do that. Those or for those those weird people okay and and seeing those things emerge in my life and feeling his power on dimensions that I can hardly tolerate 
And then let me tell you what happens. We love it. We love the miracles. Let me let me tell you. Because, you know, to, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants all of us to be carriers of his glory and demonstrators of his power. You know, and, and that's, that's totally biblical and it's totally what he would have for us. Okay, but a lot of times we don't always understand the process or we would like to avoid it and let somebody else do the job. And I'll explain to you why. Because when you feel power like that, this is, I call it the back kick. The back kick of the gift of miracles. The back kick. Okay? What is the back kick? Well, what happens is whatever's in me that is not of God comes to the surface. It shows itself. Whenever that power comes on me, I have, I have an encounter with myself right after. <laughs> okay? I used to watch the miracle guys on TV. You ever watch those like those uh, videos? You, you know when they used to have uh, um, what was it? Um, well, I watch. I'm, I just don't want to name names, so I'm trying to like think like 20 years back. But anyway, <laughs> but I would watch these guys on TV. These miracle guys. Okay, totally legit. The miracles are legit. Huge ministries, and I'd watch them abuse their staff. I'd watch them abuse, I'd watch them yell at their staff, I'd watch them yell at people, and I would be thinking to myself, these guys are jerks, I'm like total jerks, I don't, you know, and, I'm, and these awesome miracles are happening, and it's just amazing, you know, and then I'm watching them abuse their staff, and I'm like criticizing them, and I'm cutting them inside, I'm like, these jerks, you know, I'm like, God, don't you have anything better, you know, and so, you know, sorry, that's my attitude, um, and so, so I'm thinking these, all these, all these thoughts, you know, these judgmental thoughts, until the, that, that kind of power started floating on me and I started being the jerk. You say, well, what's going on? What's going on? What's in me came out. A lot of times we, we have called it the anointing. <laughs> it's not the anointing. You're just a jerk. <laughs> it's not the anointing at all. <laughs> And the thing is, I'm, I'm like putting myself right there. I'm like, I'm going to be so honest with you. I would watch rage come out of me after I just saw like crazy miracles. <laughs> and yet I'm willing to work it through. <laughs> I'm like, God, I've got a problem. <laughs> I'm not going to back up from this thing because I'm seeing all my garbage come up. I'm not going to call it the anointing. It is not the anointing. Okay, I'm not going to create some sort of doctrine or theology to, to secure my sin within myself, you know? All right. 